Hey YouTube, Brian Phillips here again. Just getting ready to keep working on this bridge and got some new forks. <laughs> I have my bucket on top of the forks because uh, I was too lazy to take the stuff out of the bucket. And I'm down here finishing what happened last night. I, I started putting these SPACs uh, lag bolt screw deals in and I wanted to share some findings. You'll notice they're not lined up perfect which breaks my heart. Um, that's just the way the log, the crown of the log was, which is really unfortunate because it'd look a lot nicer if they were lined up perfect, but you know, such is life. These things are really nice. I learned something that I didn't expect to. I got this Bosch 18 volt impact lithium ion. It's got a brushed motor, not the brushless. And then I've got the regular drill. And you know, once you get one of these, you almost never go back to this. But you'll notice that the uh, T30 bit is in the drill, not the impact. And the drill bit is sitting over here. Two things I learned. One, you absolutely do not need to pre-drill these things unless you want to. Um, I think it does make it probably a little bit easier on your drill. And then two, when they don't go in, you are gonna hate life. <laughs> because <laughs> they're really hard to get in i learned that with the impact they'll stop sometimes you know out an inch sometimes right flush sometimes a little bit shy of flush kind of like this one here so what you have to be prepared to do is take some sort of a tool and make sure you got a clean hole like this and then you take your your drill you put it on your high torque setting and then you have to I'm going to brace it up against my leg. Just really get in there and just, it's, you got to put a ton of pressure on there. Sorry guys, I accidentally stopped the video. I was just saying you have to put a ton of pressure on this to keep it from just about ripping out of your hand. Um, something we're not accustomed to since we've all switched over to impact drivers it's so nice to use them but anyway then you're left with nasty ones like this that are totally stripped and so i have to go find an appropriate bit this is a t30 bit here torx and uh i think i might be able to find just a regular hex drive that'll fit in there and if not i'll just chop suey maybe use a a grinder or something like that but these things are pretty awesome um the bridge decking is just there is not a hesitation anywhere except for here so i'm gonna get that figured out and then i think before we jump onto the uh two by four 16 footers and then the two extra ones i don't know what i'm gonna do i'm probably just return those because they're expensive. I think I'm going to try to put those down here. And uh, we'll see if that works out. But before we do that, I want to get a log and we'll get that supported. And then we'll come right back and show you how that turned out. So I've got to decide how I'm going to handle that. So I can get some support under here. I'm probably just going to find a log. I'd rather not cut this, this board or cut this board because I think it'll look bad and then I've got these uh, two additional 2x10s two and 2x4 two 16 footers that originally I had planned on running down the length so we're gonna take a look at that but I think it's about time to test it with the uh, with the machinery so I got to get this worked out and we'll come right back with that all right guys so we're back again I figured out how to get that thing out. Um, remember how I told you it was using T30? Uh, that's a T40 tip. And uh, watch this. This is not pre-drilled. I just have it started so I can show you. Okay, I got to use both hands. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So 
So there you have it. And that's a T40 tip, which explains why we were stripping them with the smaller bits. So see how there's just no, there's no way you can do that without really supporting this thing. So I'm gonna try to put it up against my leg. Just watch it pull the board down. It's very challenging to film this and do this at the same time. I want to show you how well it works. I'm going to be more persistent. We'll see if we can get this perfect shot for you. I feel bad because I want you guys to see how awesome this works. So basically, you can pull those things down really tight, which is just incredible and really nice. And when you use the right size bit, it makes a big difference. So this one, this one I just decided I'd go ahead and break it right off. The only way I broke that off was by using this t40 so you live and you learn hopefully you guys double check that but uh my friendly helper at menards told me t30 and i don't know why i assumed he was right i made it through this whole deck with the wrong size which is incredible but it's uh still put together and i only broke one and uh the ones that i thought i had stripped are probably actually not stripped and then one of the complications I ran into is I wanted to be able to remove these so that I could put concrete in and around the logs here, here, and then here. And I had mentioned I won't be able to get them undone. Well, the way I'm going to get them undone is just with a regular drill. So you just have to make sure the holes are clean so you don't strip them out. But I couldn't resist sharing that with you. I know it's kind of embarrassing for me, but I'd rather skip the embarrassment for you guys. Since you've watched this really long video, we're gonna test it next. Oh, and then I have to show you one other thing we did. I found a log, and then I just ran just your regular conventional screws, decking screws, just a short log, just something to support this spot. It's not attached to this other part of the deck, so as I backfill in here and make my approach here shortly, after I get my concrete and stuff done, then uh, that'll have something to hold up this half of the last board. So as the load gets on there, it's not gonna give way. It should keep things nice and steady. All right, more coming real soon. All right guys, the time has come. Notice I don't have the ballast box on, which means I can make this tractor another 600 pounds. I'm in low gear four-wheel drive is on so just all the precautions I can take breaks off there's nothing So as you can see, the tractor is on here. I did run the front end up. Doesn't look like it's too upset about it. That is awesome. Of course, I gotta do a little bit of work on the other side to get that approach built up. And this thing is gonna get covered in mud. It's gonna be so messy. But that is a pretty big relief. And you'll notice that I'm off to the one side. That's obviously because I need to 
try to put the load over the, the main load bearing structure, which are the big logs. And those logs are pretty big. So I think we have a fair amount of safety margins there. And even though it would probably make for a really hilarious YouTube video, I hope it doesn't crash down right now. But there you have it. Now I just need to figure out, am I gonna try to do the, the curb along the side or not? And to be honest with you, I'm not sure if I really care. It would be kind of nice with certain implements. And then the other thing is, am I gonna be okay to, to drive in between the load bearing members? And I'm, I'm certain that I can, but I think I'm gonna have better luck if I favor over the logs especially from the standpoint of as this wood dries out, it's gonna to wanna to pop and hiss and pull those heads out from those spacks. But so far, it has not fallen in yet. So really excited about that. Now I get to use my forks to move some of this stuff. But there you have it, folks. The bridge is working. So we'll give you, a, give you some more information coming up if we end up doing concrete or what. So one way or another, and then maybe we'll do another test with the ballast box. And I think the bucket is technically a little bit heavier than the forks. So we could test it with that. And then if I'm hauling a trailer, really what's going to happen is I'm going to transfer enough of the front load off of the, the bridge. So really this is kind of about the worst case scenario, um, parked in the middle. And then the load of course would be pulled behind. So Obviously, if this works, the zero turn will work just fine, which was my original plan. And here we are. All right, guys, we'll get you some more footage coming real soon. Thanks for watching. Hang in there. Better than uh, getting a run up. So guys, it worked. And uh, obviously I was having to do some stupid stuff over there to get up onto the uh, edge of the bridge, but obviously we have to work the approaches. So our next step is gonna be to get some concrete poured in around and uh, we'll just let that set up. It's not gonna change the way it looks or operates as far as you're concerned, uh, but it's gonna, it's gonna help to make it 
stay stable as they're free, freeze and thaw. So that's our next step. And then we're gonna work on the curb. So come back for more. Okay, YouTube, just got done doing the first three bags. And uh, got the next three bags ready. Basically, we've got it mixed up and dumped around so that it interlaces all the logs. As you can probably imagine, I was able to get that board off. I used my drill and the T40 tip. Worked really good. Didn't have any problems. So, of course, we're up freezing. So we should be okay to let that be. And then I just need to do the same thing on the other side. I'm probably going to go ahead and put that board back just to keep stuff from getting in the wet concrete. And of course that's dug down all the way to the bottom of the logs. So that'll make a, I mean it's 360 pound bag so 240 pounds plus the water weight. So that should help to lock things in. And then as you saw earlier, the tractor went across without any problems. So when we're all done with that and this stuff is set up, then we'll go ahead and put these dirt piles back, more or less make our approach and then be done with it. So we'll give you a final shot of that when that happens. And then obviously we'll get this pallet out of here and get the wood returned where it needs to be. And then obviously get this out of here as well. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. So we're down to the last step, which is waiting. We got the concrete. Put in these holes. Hopefully I didn't get any concrete on the decking. I don't think I did. These three... They were hard because I was doing it pretty much in the dark. You're looking from the flash of my camera on the phone. And uh, basically I excavated a little bit more dirt and basically poured in a bag, a 60 pound bag of concrete mix and grabbed some water from down in the creek. Just kind of went around the edges and kind of notched it in there. And I of course had to take off this last board which is sitting there. Then of course you already saw the the other side which is sitting over there. Sorry. My uh sleeves are breathing evidently. So yeah, so that's it. Now I just wait. Let this stuff set up. Reattach those boards. And then I have to figure out about the 16 foot long piece that's going to go on either side as a curb. And whether or not I'm going to take and trim along the edge or if I'm just going to more or less use that to make a straight edge. Or maybe I'll take these back and get some 2x6s instead and I can run the 2x6 or some other size down the length of this bridge. And that'll make a little curve for me. Maybe I'll even double it up, but it might be kind of nice with these notches because it'll give a place for drainage. So if I just remember to hit where I've got some material when I put my screws in, I hadn't thought about that until just now. So, but anyhow, there's my tractor staring at me saying it's time to be done, Brian. But anyway, there you have it. So tomorrow we've got rain in the forecast. So hopefully the stuff will be set up just enough to make it so that I don't have to come out in the mud and screw with anything. And uh, I stepped into this one. So now I get to walk across the old bridge. I'm glad I didn't yank it out earlier because that's what I was about to do. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this project. It's tedious as usual, but it's going to be uh, hopefully a lasting thing that we'll get seven, eight years out of, I hope. And uh, it's going to be really pivotal in getting us back to the, to the back half of our property to take hay, which is going to be a big deal for us. So, and if you're curious, you can follow along the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Come back for more.